people are always needing encouragement and assurance. Assurance is basically being certain that something is true. Hebrews 11, 1 and 6, those are two of my favorite verses. Not my life verse, but just one that ministers to my heart all the time. Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Coming forward this morning and to receive that prayer is an act of your faith. Amen? It isn't anything that we bring to the table. It's how we bring attention to what Jesus has already done. He loves you. He loves you. You need to have that assurance. Faith is acting like you and I believe the word of God and how he says he loves us is the truth. That We believe it. Probably one of my stronger spiritual gifts is as an encourager and as an exhorter. I want people to find that place in the relationship with God that is powerful. Powerful. And that I want them to fulfill all that Jesus created them to be and to do. And we need encouragement some days, don't we? Life gets in the way. Life is a challenge. And it can be very difficult. I know, sometimes I, I pick up the phone and I think, God, no, no, no more, no more challenges for people for a while, God. And then I see that he brings his grace to bear. And no matter what anyone's going through, Jesus is there. Amen? He is just always there. Jeremiah was an Old Testament prophet. He was sent to warn Judah that God would judge them for their disobedience to his command. He sought to gain their attention, to assure them of truth, to challenge them, and most importantly, to encourage their faith. Jeremiah predicted that after the destruction of the nation, God would send a Messiah through the lineage of David who would lead them into a new future. Somebody say a new future. A new covenant. Someone say a new covenant. And a new day of hope. There you go. He was talking about restoration. God would do this by changing human hearts that were stony into hearts of love. Amen? Now, I'd like to read just a little bit from Jeremiah chapter 31. Just a couple of verses. This is part of what Jeremiah shared from God. Now, this is what the Lord says. Sing with joy for Israel. Shout for the greatest of nations. Shout out with praise and joy. Save your people, O Lord, the remnant of Israel, the remnant, the, the exiles more than likely. For I will bring them from the north and from the distant corners of the earth. I'll not forget the blind, the lame, the expectant mothers, the women in labor. A great company will return Tears of joy will stream down their faces, and I will lead them home with great care. They will walk beside quiet streams, and on smooth paths they will not stumble. God would fulfill his word through Jeremiah, but there would be a period of waiting. Somebody say waiting. waiting. <laughs> Amen. And this waiting would be difficult. Have you ever been waiting for the Lord to bring something to pass? Something for which you had a word from God. You know what I mean, like waiting and waiting and waiting some more. You begin to wonder if you had imagined that you heard a word from the Lord, that you'd had a promise in the first place. Your faith wanes and no one around you seems to be looking for the manifestation of the promise anymore. Jeremiah's time. During our gaining connection today, I read from the Gospel of Mark about Bartimaeus, the shouting blind beggar. He was waiting along the roadside. Here we see the fulfillment of Jeremiah's word revealing Messiah and God's promise to restore the blind, don't we? So don't miss it. There was a long period of time 
a long period of waiting that required tenacity of faith. The letter to the Hebrews, the men and women of faith, was written to the second generation Christians who were going through such fierce per per persecution, both uh, socially and physically, that they became discouraged. They were so tired of waiting that they were thinking about returning to Judaism and living under the old covenant once again. Christ had not returned to establish his kingdom when they expected, and the people needed reassurance that Jesus was indeed the Messiah and that this new covenant was a better covenant than the old covenant. I'd like to read from Hebrews chapter 7. There were many priests under the old system, the old covenant, <clears throat> for death prevented them from remaining in office. But because Jesus lives forever, his priesthood lasts forever. Therefore, he is able once and forever to save those who come to God through him. He lives forever to intercede with God on their behalf. He is the kind of high priest we need because he is holy. He is blameless. He's unstained by sin. He's been set apart from sinners and has been given the highest place of honor in heaven. And unlike those other high priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices every day. They did this for their own sins, first for their own sins and then for the sins of the people. But Jesus did this once and for all when he offered himself as a sacrifice for his people's sin. The law appointed high priests who were limited by human weakness but after the law was given, God appointed his son with an oath. And his son has been made perfect, the perfect high priest forever. The author of Hebrews stirred the people's faith by helping them see the superiority of Jesus Christ and the value of the new covenant for salvation by contrasting two covenants, making two very important points. The Old Covenant Priest and the New Covenant High Priest, King Jesus. Point number one, since Jesus lives forever, his salvation is forever. Somebody say permanent. Thank you. Our God is eternal, and our high priest must be eternal. Romans 8, 31 through 34 reads, If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything we need? Who dares accuse us of whom God has chosen for his own? No one. For God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who did it? Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Who then will condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and who was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor pleading for us. Who does this? Jesus. Somebody say it's always about Jesus. It's always going to be about Jesus. If you hear a gospel that is other than about Jesus, you've been misled. It is always going to be about Jesus. Amen? Point number two. Jesus sacrificed himself once for humanity. Earthly priests had to make repeated sacrifices to deal with their own sin and the sin of the people. Jesus is unstained by sin. He's set apart from sinners, according to Scripture. He gave his life as a sacrifice one time, and it never needs to be repeated. Let that permeate. Jesus is not limited by our human weaknesses, or he was not limited by his own humanness. He was sinless, and he triumphed over mortality. He's the ultimate authority. He's com a complete revelation of God. Romans 1.3, the Son radiates God's own glory, and he expresses the very character of God, and he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. So let me ask you, is that someone you'd want to intercede for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. John Maxwell speaks to authority. He says there's two kinds of authority. There's designated authority. That would be to be assigned over something. And there's moral authority. That's 
That's that authority that comes by being a trustworthy, respected being. It's earned. Now, Jesus intercedes as both designated and moral authority as our high priest. No one could love us more than Jesus. No one will plead for our salvation before God better and more pure than Jesus Christ. Faith enables Christians, and today we're talking about faith, enables Christians to face trials. Now, a lot of times I hear people say, but Pastor Mary, I've been praying that God would take away this whatever, and I really, a lot of times, will have to remind you his grace is sufficient, and if he's taken you to it, he's going to walk with you through it, and you will come out with a testimony. All right? You need to know that if you've been going through some stuff, it is about your faith. Now, that doesn't mean that it isn't the enemy coming against you. It just simply means that your faith is sufficient. And Jesus intercedes for you. Somebody say, I need Jesus. The living word of God brings intercession. Meditating on that word, that word of God, brings assurance that is an essential part of that perpetual intercession. So how do we meditate on the word of God for our intercession and our healing? I want to give you a couple ideas, all right? I want you, when you read the word of God, to personalize the verse. Personalize the verse. Second, I want you to visualize yourself doing what the verse says. And number three, I want you to speak the verse aloud. So, brothers and sisters, close your eyes. We are going to personalize, visualize, and speak. James 1, 2 through 4, and 12. I'd like you to repeat several phrases after me. I will prompt you. I consider it wholly joyful. Whenever I am enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. We're going to pause there. Think about your life. Put, think about your life and just put yourself there for a second and then we'll pick back up. Visualize what's he doing in your life. Now, let's continue. I am assured, and I understand, that the trial and proving of my faith brings out endurance and steadfastness and patience. We're going to continue. I let endurance and steadfastness and patience, and patience have full play, have full play. And, do and do a thorough work in me so that I may be, so I may be perfectly, perfectly and, fully and fully developed, developed with, no with no defects, lacking nothing. Lacking nothing. I, am I am blessed when I am patient under trial. And stand, and stand up under temptation. When, for when I have stood the test, stood the test. And, been and been approved, I will receive, I will receive the, crown the crown of life, which God has promised, God has promised to, me to me because I love him. Love him. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you believe that God desires for us to speak with authority the word of God through our lips. Amen? You have this morning expressed your faith in God and his ultimate victory in your life. And you will be an overcomer. It's your faith that overcomes. Amen? Let's pray.
Father, we just thank you this morning for your love and your reminder of who Jesus is as our high priest, our intercessor. We have the assurance, that blessed assurance, that you are going to fulfill every aspect of your plan for our lives. You create us, Lord. You redeem us, Father, and you call us to be vessels and ministers of your grace. And that means we have to overcome many things in life. Help us to not be weary in well-doing. Help us to endure the waiting, Father, because the heroes of the faith have shown us that your promise will come to pass. So we thank you for your promise in our lives, and we're going to hang on to your word. I don't want anyone in this room and hearing this to forget the fact that we serve the God of the impossible. We do. And you know what's impossible? Changing the human heart. Amen? It's true. The hardest thing to do is to change the human heart. You think about how you've tried to change yourself. Can't do it. You might be successful for a momentary time, but not long term. Well, God is the God of the impossible. And as he changes the heart, it changes things all around us, doesn't it? It brings victory. It brings resolve. It brings strength that you don't even know exists in you. He does miracles in each of our lives every day. Every day. And we just get kind of pathetic in that waiting time, right? For that next big hurrah. But can I tell you that it's the little things that build character? And it's character that Jesus cares about. Amen? So as you walk out this week, I want you to be resolved to get in the Word of God. I want you in it. See, you know, the Word of God comes with, a, a, you know, you want to make a mental ascent with that. But the Spirit of God can make that a rhema word for you. That Spirit of God can just make that so alive to you and you understand it in a way and it just comes from the inside out. And that's what you need. Amen? Because your faith will be under attack if you choose to walk it out. It will. Trust that anything's possible with God. You are an overcomer. You can get in that word and you can, you can study it and meditate on it and internalize it and you can visualize it and you can speak it. And it becomes life for your spirit. And then it feeds your soul. So let it do that this week, okay? Be blessed. Go in peace.